common question, so uh, I want to try and answer it. Lots of people ask on PHEV, so it's a plug in hybrid. Um, what happens when it runs out of charge? Uh, or what happens if you don't charge it? So I'm going to drive a PHEV. That's a plug in hybrid, which basically means it's a hybrid car, which means it can run in battery and engine uh, for small periods, but, uh, which is like a normal hybrid. Um, but this one, because it's a plug in hybrid, also gives you it's a slightly larger battery than a normal hybrid which means it gives you the ability to run about 40 to 50 kilometers on full electric drive. So a lot of people ask then, what happens if you don't charge it? Or what happens once it runs out of charge? So this is going to be a pretty quick video. Uh, apologies, now it is quite dark. So this is a plug-in. So it's plugged in. So what I'm going to do is take that out. Oops, and I'm going to take it out from the car as well. Over here, I'm going to chuck that in the boot. Somebody's got a really noisy fan belt, which they need to fix, but anyway, right. So this is the entry model, so it has the analog clock, but the main thing that's important, see over here, I have a full battery, which means that if I toggle through the menus here, let's have a look to see how much range have I got on the car. Which we can see over here then, the car is saying it's got 77 kilometers of fuel, it's got 59 kilometers of battery, and if we come over here to the center, then that means that the car has, we're going to energy information, and it means I've got 59 of electric, I've got 77 of fuel, so I've got a total range of 136 kilometers. So that means, and here's the thing, and I've answered this before in a different video, if you want uh, to know what it is, just let me know and I'll send you a link, but I can basically store this electric energy. So what I can do is I can actually drive the car on hybrid mode and keep that 50 odd kilometers of electric driving till later. In this, for the sake of the video, I'm going to start off by using the electric mode pretty much quickly and just wear it out, just to show you what happens after we've run out of full electric driving. Remember with these plug-in hybrids, I have a little button down here and that allows me to toggle through an automatic mode, which chooses when the best time to use electric or hybrid is. Or I can go to a hybrid mode, which means all it's going to do is use a marginal small amount of battery to assist the petrol engine uh, or else I can go to this full electric mode and you can hear the engine has stopped now as well where I'm using full electricity. Uh, I've a bit of driving to this weekend, so I just put fuel in the car. So just if anyone's wondering, the top range when you're looking at this up here, 368, that's composed of obviously a uh, petrol hybrid amount plus the battery as well. So anyway, just something that people might wonder uh, how that works. So uh, let's go driving. Let's go into EV mode. Uh, one thing, I'm going to do another video, by the way. If you have the heating on, it messes up the electric mode on these uh, while you're driving. So you see the way the engine's actually cut out? If I start this back up, engine is going to come back in. So electric mode, you can hear it. Electric mode struggles a little bit. That's for another video. Anyway, I'm going to go through that. Uh, there's loads of reasons. It's interesting. I'll go through all that with you in another video. So we're going to go into electric and I'm going to have to kill the heater for the moment just to use up that electric. So I've got about 90 or so kilometers to drive. So in about 60 kilometers an hour, or 60 kilometers time, we will have lost the ability to do full electric driving, kind of. I'll explain it to you a bit better. So I'm just going to use up this electric range first and uh, I'll chat to you soon. Just while we are driving, actually, a really common question that people ask is, what speed can you do in an EV? Well, I'm doing, what, 121 there at the moment. And you can see up here, uh, EV. So we are cruising quite comfortably at 120. I've never, I don't know what the top speed is. I can't, you know, legally find out. Um, but the main thing about this is, as long as I don't really floor the throttle that much and I just maintain the speed and I'm going up a hill here um, it'll quite comfortably cruise in EV mode no problem at these kind of normal speeds I have another video if you're curious about the acceleration just let me know and I can send you a link uh, as to what kind of speed or what kind of acceleration level these PHEVs can do when they're in full EV mode just another point to note and I will cover this in another video like we're saying to you up here you can see the green EV if I turn on the heating okay so uh, turn on the heating, I want to clear the front windscreen. This is going to be a problem for people. Front windscreen, I'm no longer in full EV mode. I turn it back off, give it a sec. Little EV has popped back up here again. So I guess what I'm saying to you is it actually does make a difference on these. I think for some people that are going to do a short hop in the mornings on a PHEV, this is going to be a problem because they're going to get into the car, they want to keep the windscreen clear, they want to heat the car. Um, and the PHEV is not going to be able to run a full electric mode uh, in some of the cold weather at certain times. Again, I'm going to cover that in another video. It was just a point of note and observation at the moment. Anyway, we're down to about 37 kilometers. Let's keep going. But remember, that's not to knock these cars. These are an awesome car to drive. Four wheel drive, 265 horsepower combined with the 1.6 turbo engine, the bigger battery. They feel really sure footed. I suppose the whole thing about the PHEV is 
there's a time and a place. So yeah, if you live in really cold weather or at certain times of the year, the full electric part may not be as effective, but once you get up to operating temperature and the cabin's warm, it becomes completely usable. And I suppose there is gonna be times of the year where it's quite warm and you won't need as much heating in the cabin and that's where you'll be able to use electric mode more. Or in this case where I'm driving, I'm uh, using electric mode here at the start. I could have heated up the cabin a bit better and then started using electric. So you just have to be a little bit flexible to get the most out of these PHEVs, but still a really, really nice car to drive. So we're getting close now. We're down to what, eight kilometers uh, of battery left. But look at the battery gauge over here on the left. That's still reading about a third, which kind of is confusing. Um, and that's where some people get tripped up. Um, anyway, I'm gonna explain this a little bit better in a sec, but when we get down to zero, this battery gauge will not be empty. And the reason it won't be empty is it always maintains a little bit. It maintains about 15% of battery. So you never get to fully zero. With electric cars, anyway, even like a full EV, when it says 0%, it's not 0%. It actually, in the background, uh, not on view to the public, it keeps a little bit of charge behind that. But when this gets down to zero down here, we will still have some charge over here. And that's to maintain the hybrid driving. So we're down to two kilometers, pretty much nearly running out of charge. Uh, what's interesting is I've averaged 1.2 liter per 100 kilometers. I, like that's like 600 million miles per gallon. It's like, I suppose, look, it's not a realistic number. I've spent most of my journey in electric. I used a little bit at the start of hybrid to heat the cabin. Um, but it just goes to show like when you do an average out, if I did another 50 kilometers on hybrid, I'd still be getting some awesome fuel efficiency. Anyway, back onto our gauge here, which is telling us two kilometers left and we're down to one kilometer left so if we look over here at our energy monitor i've got 20 percent battery but i've got one um kilometer left actually, i actually have to say the last two to three kilometers last three kilometers my god they've gone on forever uh so anyway we have one kilometer left you see we're in ev mode up here in the top so as we transition into zero and i know this is a little bit boring but i just want to watch what happens on the crossover back into zero uh so come on one kilometer this is a long kilometer uh so when it goes to zero we might still stay in a little bit of an ev mode because we're driving reasonably relaxed and this is something i want to show people as well because sometimes people we had some people that asked well once this plug-in part this full electric part goes out that means it's just back in petrol right and i suppose no no is the answer it's just going to behave like a normal hybrid uh one other thing i was going to say to people if you don't plan on charging one of these phevs buy the hybrid and the non don't buy the plug-in because the plug-in has a heavier battery it's got a four-wheel drive system so it's a heavier vehicle so it's going to be harder on fuel and um, so you know only buy it if you plan on charging it but if you don't plan on charging it just buy the normal hybrid still at one kilometer this is absolutely ridiculous this is like the world's uh, the guinness book records get them this is the world's longest kilometer uh so i'm expecting this to drop into zero any second now i are going to watch though to see what happens on the transition so one kilometer, 14 kilometers later, we're still in one kilometer. Um, come on, God almighty, I don't think I've ever waited this long. There we go, zero. And we're still in EV. So if you look along here on the right-hand side, we are still in EV and that's something I want to show people. So because I'm cruising along nice and easily, I can behave like a normal hybrid car here. I'm up in EV. As you see over here, we've run out of electric charge. It's maintaining 15% of battery i.e. the battery will not really drop down below that level uh, it'll stay there thereabouts to allow us to behave like a normal hybrid car so that's what happens now okay it won't stay at 15 it'll drop down a little bit but it'll continuously then get down to a level and it'll recycle and pull itself back up but it'll you know stay in around that area so yes we are now gone back into a hybrid mode so looking at the energy flow in the car the engine is uh, sending energy back up to the battery down here because it needs to charge it uh, but it's still also driving the wheels uh, but eventually that will charge the battery sufficiently and we'll be able to go back into an ev mode granted a short ev mode where maybe we're doing somewhere in the region of maybe uh one kilometer half a kilometer something like that or especially if you're creeping in traffic it'll allow you to use some electric driving but for the vast majority of higher speed driving or acceleration it's going to use both as you see right now we're going back into ev and if we look at the energy flow we're in full EV driving as well. So I hope this makes a bit more sense. And then once I plug it in again, it'll charge back up to give me that 50 kilometer range and it'll allow us to start cruising again, like we did doing a lot of an electric drive. So anyway, hopefully that video is useful. Basically what we're trying to say here is if you charge the car, use the full electric drive, it'll give you about 50 kilometers. Once you run out of that full electric drive, um, 
the battery will get down to a range, or sorry, the range will get down to zero in terms of full electric drive where you make the decision. However, at that point, you could literally drive the car forever and never ever charge it ever again. And it'll behave like a normal hybrid car, where in this case, it's using, it's maintaining about 15% battery. And that's where petrol engine and battery will work together most of the time, especially at motorway speeds and all that kind of stuff or under acceleration. However, there is times where if you're really feathering the throttle, you'll be able to do some electric driving. And if you're creeping in traffic and all that stuff, you'll be able to do some electric driving as well. So like we said, full charge gives the long range 50 kilometers. Uh, once it's run out of charge, it'll still be able to be behave like a hybrid where it's using the two power sources in a slightly different fashion. Hopefully that makes more sense and hopefully it's answered some questions or if it hasn't, let me know in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer your questions uh, better. Uh, or if you think the video is useful, just give it a like, please, it'd be great. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching and hopefully it's been useful and I totally apologize with the really crap camera work and stuff, but it's more just a pragmatic exercise uh, to help people understand. All right, thank you.